So when you think of an evil Predacon, what kind of beast modes do you immediately think of? You know, maybe a Tyrannosaurus, a Scorpion, a Pteranodon, a Pillbug, a Raptor, wait, 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 what? Pillbug? Yeah, you know, your average roly-poly, those little things that curl up into balls the second they see you or the second you touch them. This makes you think pure evil, huh? Oh. Apparently, in 1997, the designers for Transformers were really, really stretched for ideas. And it wasn't enough, they started to rehash old characters. What new characters they came up with? Not so impressive. So, tonight I'm going to bring you one of the most hated and one of the worst designs of any Transformer, generously donated by Ojunix. I thank him very much, though I will say I've had more fun passing stones than I have actually playing with this toy. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the atrocity that is Retrax. Now I admit, I got this toy donated a long time ago, so maybe it doesn't have as many flaws as I remember it having. We're going to be here a while. Alright, let's get it over with. As you can see, Retrax is a green pill bug. A green pill bug with spikes all the way down its back, huge pincers here in the front, and not to be outdone, a stinger in the back. This is not a pill bug. What the hell? I mean, this looks like something that could only occur on Mars. You, you know what? I, I take that back. This is probably too alien even for an alien to recognize. What the hell were they thinking? Alright. A quick biology lesson. Armadillidium vulgare, the common pill bug, is characterized by its brown exoskeleton that allows it to curl up into a ball in order to defend against predators as it has no natural weapons of its own. How many ways can you possibly cheat? I mean, it's not enough. You slap claws and pinchers and stingers on it. You have to cover it in spikes, too, and change its color arbitrarily. How much more can you do? I mean, just make up your own animal at that point. I mean, hell, anything, anything is a threatening Predacon if you stick enough crap all over it. Okay, how, how about we'll make a panda bear, but we'll give it devil horns. Oh, and then we'll put, like, buzz saws all down its back, and it can breathe fire. Oh, awesome. Send it to Walmart. I'm a marketing genius. Problems are only compounded by the eyes. As you can see, it's got the normal bug eyes. These big black, little sectioned off eyes. You know, just the way you'd expect a bug to have. Except that alone would be cute. So a Predacon can't be cute. So of all things, they painted on angry anime eyes. <laughs> it, just, it makes the toy go from ridiculous to downright laughable. I mean, there's no way I could take this seriously anymore. I mean, even if you could to begin with. This is horrible. I mean, who ever thought that was a good solution? Oh, let's just make it look mad, like a cartoon character. Aside from that, let's see, functionality, functionality. Okay, you've got the little antenna that can move in and out. Eh, no big deal. He's got five legs on each side. I'm sure that's not enough to accurately represent a pill bug. And I'm sure they don't hang off its shell like this. But it does a fair job. No. Ironically, it's got the most articulation of a Beast Wars toy I own, with a full 10 or 12, including the antenna. But after that, it's all gimmicks, as you can see by all these yellow switches on his back. The first is the stinger, easy enough. And then the jaws, the mandibles. 
unless the antenna are in the way. There's another one. I hate gimmicks that can be in interfered with by kibble hanging off of the toy in any way. It works okay once you get it out of the way, but if you forget to bring them up, it looks ridiculous. Speaking of looking ridiculous, what the hell is that? I'm not sure if you can see it, but his robot mode head is visible out the side. It looks like he swallowed somebody's head. Oh my god, it's a cannibal transformer. That's just disturbing. I mean, who, whose bright idea was it to make this one piece of plastic translucent? I mean, it's absolutely pointless. <laughs> oh my god, that's just unsettling. Let's get off of that, and we'll get on to the main horrific feature, the primary gimmick. In this case, it's a pill bug. So take a wild guess what it does when I put these two switches together. Oh, look at that. It rolls into a little ball. Or maybe it turns into a tiny little unicron. Oh, this is, that's it. It's Beast Wars Unicron. You know, after he's gone like all animal and stuff. Or maybe it's some rejected mad ball design. If only it were that cool. It's just a pill bug, so of course they decided that the whole point of the toy was this one gimmick. Alright, everyone, say it with me. Gimmicks are evil. I don't mind a few action features. I mean, a, sh a firing missile and a flip-out blade, that's no big deal. I mean, that's all in good fun. But once you design a feature that is so complex you have to design the rest of the toy around it, then you're talking gimmick. And then it's no longer a toy. It's a novelty with a cute trick and a couple arms and legs hanging off of it. That's not good. It completely decimates the toy. I mean, I, mean, I don't care what you thought was a good idea after eight beers and a couple scribbles on a cocktail napkin one day. You don't base a toy around it. Now on to robot mode, and okay, okay, seriously, take a look at the horns on this head. I'm serious about this Unicron thing, people. Seriously, it's the only way this toy could get more evil is to actually be Unicron. I swear it. Now, it's added a lot more white to this mode, which kind of kills off all that dark green from Beast mode. To be honest, the colors are probably the only decent thing about this. Of course, we've already acknowledged they had to completely go against nature and make it completely inaccurate to the actual animal. So the color itself is horrifically bad. And then you see everything else is horrifically bad. In case you can't tell, <laughs> this mess of springs and levers, those are his arms. And yeah, these big things in the sides, those are his hands. I'm not kidding you. That's how they designed him. So, let's get this straight here. He goes from a beast mode where he curls up like a coward into a ball, as if to say, not in the face, not in the face, into a robot mode where his arms are splayed open to hug the world. Oh, come over here, you big lug nut. Come on. That's not a Predacon. That's a, that's a lost kids show character, Spiny, the pacifistic pill bug. Now, functionality. Articulation is absolutely non-existent. Oh, don't get, don't get me wrong, he's got a few points of articulation, but none of them are all that useful. He gets the head joint on mine, it's so tight, you probably can't turn it without having to hold the entire thing still. It just moves a whole toy on its own, it's so stiff. Naturally, because of the gimmick, once again, because of the gimmick, there is no articulation in the arms. You can pop these out, but there's absolutely no friction once you do, and no point to it. And he can't even bring his hands together to clap as much as it looks like he can. The only articulation is below the waist. You've got ball-jointed hips. It actually swivels just below that joint. You've got a really, really good knee. I mean, it has a m huge amount of clearance here. It works just as well as a double knee joint in a strange way. And that would be well and good if any of it amounted to anything. You see his feet? They're pointed on the edges, which means there's only two points it can balance on. Those little spikes. Everything else makes him rock back and forth. So you can't have his legs apart because he's just going to do this. 
which means the leg pose ability is completely useless. It's an absolute atrocity. Like I said, gimmicks are evil. This is why they do not make for good toys when you make it all about the gimmick. Speaking of, it still works here, but now he's just applauding. Since it curls up a little tighter, it does tend to pop off of these, and it doesn't really hurt anything. And the other gimmicks still work here as well. But in the end, he's still cowering. And this time he just literally is hugging you. I mean, all the gimmicks are totally evil, except for this one. This one's just overly friendly, which makes it bad for a Predacon. Okay, at this point in the video, I'm going to bring up something that's been coming up a lot lately. Now, just because I give this a bad review doesn't mean I'm going to part with it in any way. I mean, it's still part of my collection. I mean, whether it's a gorgeous piece of plastic or a heaping lump of slag, it's still my collection. But, that's what we have Big Bad Toy Store for. So, for all my more masochistic fans that might possibly want this thing, we're going to do a quick little search here and we'll see if we can hook you up with an actual figure. Or maybe your own Retrax. Let's see here. Uh... Oh, oh man. I didn't know his price shot up that much. Okay, temp two. It's Takar and Hasbro. I mean, surely there's some repaint out there, some other option. Let's try. Ah, keep it away! Keep it away! One last thing to point out on Retrax is he does have an early form of Automorph, believe it or not. Yes, in order to activate it, you simply part his legs and try to actually balance him in any kind of pose. And once he tips forward, hey, look, he's back into beast mode. How absolutely handy. People, this is probably the worst example of a Transformer I've ever had the misfortune of reviewing for this series. It does not have any function as a robot, and it has nothing but really shoddy gimmicks in beast mode. So, and it's so inaccurate, I can't even give it points for that. I mean, they completely sacrificed everything that makes it a Transformer toy, any kind of actual action figure, for that. A little tiny Unicron looking ball thing. People, this is why I do Plastic Attic, because no toy line that produces 99% good toys should produce something this horrendous. There's absolutely no excuse for it. If you can produce a hundred good toys in one single series, why does one turn out this bad every time? I'm sick of it. I'm absolutely tired of seeing this happen to good toy lines. I'm tired of Christmases being ruined by finding one of these underneath a tree, or crying on a birthday because someone thought this one was one he didn't have and probably should. This is why I do Plastic Addict, because there is no excuse for this, and it has to go away. And right now, it's going to go away. Watch it go away. The best place for toys on the net? BigBadToyStore.com Pre-orders for all the hottest toys. The biggest brands. Imports of your favorites. Vintage toys available again. Collectible replicas and statues. Pile of loot. Buy some now, some later, and get it shipped all at once. It's all there right now at BigBadToyStore.com. The best laid plans.